Good morning. I try to bring you a message today about fruit. And if my throat or anything like that, I apologize. I'm being sick. But Mark chapter 4, verse 14. The sower soweth the word. Now Jesus had told a parable. We're looking at him explaining the parable to the disciples for time. And these are they which by the wayside, when the word is sown. And this is the parable of the sower that put seed out. When you come up here, it came past the sower, uh, the sower went out to sow its seed. And the sower sowed the word of God. The word was sown. But when they have heard, Satan cometh immediately and has taken away the word that was sown in hearts. Just real quick, realize, in any public evangelism you're going to do, you're going to have Satan at your butt. Rest assured. First thing that'll show up, it would be Satan. And these, they are likewise sown on stony ground. When they have heard the word, immediately receive it with gladness. Have no root in themselves, endure for, for a time. Afterwards, when afflicted or persecuted arises for the word's sake, me, they are offended. And these are sown on, among the thorns, such as hear the word. Notice the word, the word, the word, the word. And the cares of the word, the deceitful of riches, and the lusts of other things enter and choke the word. It becomes unfruitful. All right, that's an interesting point in this message, unfruitful. These are they which have sown on good ground, such as hear the word. And receive it and bring forth fruit, some sixty fold, I mean, excuse me, some thirty fold, some sixty and a hundred. There's a thirty, there's a sixty, and there's a hundred. Okay. Now we're gonna go over to Matthew seven. And verse twenty. Wherefore by their fruits, you should know them. Now, it's interesting, the fact is that sowing the word does not always have a production of produce. That when we go out there telling people about Jesus, Satan's out there too. And Satan's going to gobble up, and, and I have seen in my public ministry, I have seen many times Satan enter in and take that seat. We, we had one time we were at a flea market and I was talking to a man and we were just talking. And I thought we were going to go somewhere. And it was getting good. And then his wife called, hey, honey, want to take a look at this stuff at this table? Boom. I have seen where we have given gospel tracts to somebody and a, a parent, a friend, somebody. Taking that gospel track out of their hands. I've seen it. So number one is you're not going to say, oh, we have 100%. Even Apostle Paul had failures in his ministry of evangelizing. And Peter and James and John. Failures. But we are in a day and age today. We move to 1 Corinthians. Chapter 3. <clears throat> Paul is speaking. And I apologize for my coughing. I have planted. Those, those fruit. Those Apollos water. But God gave the increase. So when somebody goes, oh, we got 20 saved, we got 30 saved. Now, you didn't do nothing. Let me ask you, we've been talking about trees. <coughs> I apologize. What does a tree, here, here's any tree. It's a fruit tree. What's that tree brag about his fruit? What's it have to say? I've never known a tree to talk. I've never know. I've never seen a tree go. Oh, oh, I get pressurized to make a fruit. I have never seen a tree 
where the other trees, well, come on, you know, you, you got to produce your fruit. Come on, produce your fruit. Come on, you bring your fruit. A fruit tree will naturally bring forth fruit. It's not hard for a fruit tree. I don't think it, it has any pain for a fruit tree to produce its fruit. And that's one of the leading things is that, you know, is somebody saved? Well, with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession made unto salvation. It's taken for granted a saved person is going to go out and bear fruit. We're not to brag. It is God that gives the increase, 1 Corinthians 3, 6. And those that, oh, we got 10 saved this week. You don't know if they're saved. There may have been 15 saved. You didn't know about the other five. I've heard stories from preachers. Years and years later, uh, I know a preacher. He says, you know, he met this guy. He says, you know, I, I was listening to you. And I, I was working in the gas station or, you know, I was at the bus station. Or I heard you. You didn't even know I was there. And what you said later on, I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. I had, me personally, I had a man in prison. And his sister came up to me and said, you know, my brother was was in your services at the prison. I said, good. He said, he got saved that night. I didn't even know. I didn't save him. I wasn't even there. It wasn't styly, hey, it's not you. It's the word, Mark chapter 4. And when we got planted and watered, you realize what some things are for seeds? You know the great sequoias trees in California? That their reproduction of their fruit has to be burned by fire. You talk about the, the fires in California. Those fires in California, there are the great sequoia trees and there are other vegetation that relies on that fire that breaks open their seed and that even fact is that fire, when it goes to the ground, makes a fertilizer. Try that for evolution. That there are trees, sequoias, and there are vegetation that relies on a wildfire, which happens quite frequent in California, Quincy Dinky, that even the fire in the ground makes a fertilizer. And there are animals which grab seed. Birds will eat seeds. And then later on they will poop. And that seed will be in their poop. And their poop is a fertilizer for that seed. And there are seeds out there that they have to go through a specific species of bird or animal. And that through the digestive system of that animal and the poop, that seed can be used to grow a plant. Squirrels. You've seen squirrels. You ever seen a squirrel take a, take a nut and go and dig in the ground and bury that nut in the ground? Well, guess what he's done? He's planted a seed. You know, as they say, about 90% of the things that squirrels hide and bury and, 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 and gather, they never, they never can find them. And yet from squirrels going out there digging and hiding, you know, fruits and, and, and nuts and seeds, trees and plants have developed because of the work of the squirrel. You may be in your garden and you say, well, where did this plant come from? Could it came from a squirrel. It could came from a bird. It come, could came from an insect. Ants carry seeds. The wind can carry seeds. When we grew up, when I grew up as a child in Connecticut, 
we would have the dandelions. And when they turn white, you blow them. And, you know, those little white things just fly all over the place. You know what you were doing? Those little white things that change in the dandelion, you're blowing their seeds. They become seeds. Then I don't know what plan was, but it was a little pod, big green pod, and you open it up, be white, and it was like a, a sappy kind of white, sappy, milky in there, and you, you play with that, you just spread out the seeds. Listen, there is, I, I would be in great error if I said street preachers the only form of, of witness. No, it's not. I used to door knock, and with my with my help now, I, I, I won't be able to walk. But door knocking, I used to, we used to take chick jacks and put them on a rubber band and put them on door knocks. There's telephone ministry. There's putting gospel tracts in the mail. There's actually opening a Bible with somebody. There's all kinds of ways to get out there and witness and Put that seed out as there are squirrels, there is fire, there's ants, there's bugs, there's, dare you say, birds, there's all kinds of meat, even a human. You can grow, go to the local hardware store or home center and you can pick up a packet of seeds and you come home and plant those seeds. There's tons of way to get that seed out there, but it ain't us. My daughter and I were talking about sunflowers yesterday. Well, I could go to the store and buy sunflower seed, and I can plant that sunflower seed in the ground. I'm not doing nothing for that sunflower to come up. And if I plant one sunflower seed, that may not come up. It may never come up. You don't buy in a package one seed. No, you get seeds. And you're not guaranteed all those seeds are going to come up. It's so funny, even gardening here. Well, I grew some good tomatoes this year. What did you do? All right, you walked, you planted, you watered, you weeded, but you didn't grow the tomatoes. You took care of it. You planted, 1 Corinthians 3, 6. You watered, you cared for it. But you did not grow the tomatoes. In all reality, God grew the tomatoes. God can say, all right, tomato plant. You know what? You're not living a good life. I'm angry at you. You can grow that tomato plant, God can say, no tomatoes. We had one year, we had tomato plant. We lived in Norwich, Connecticut, and man, it had tomato. It was great. They reddened. And then we go out there one day, and they were all gone. And what people were doing was when they're walking down the sidewalk, they see a red tomato. Oh, that looks good. And they take it. And that's the symbol of Jehovah Witnesses. You get a you get a, a fruit in your church and you establish that fruit and it starts growing. And then you get the wolves that come along and snatch the, the fruit. And it's sad. The fact is, some, I've seen some pastors where the fruit doesn't come in the assembly of the church, and the pastor just goes out and does nothing. And yet we sing about the 99, and when that one fruit goes away, some churches don't care. We go after the 10 and 20 new ones to get saved. All the work we do is not the work you do. And there are people with our with our farmers market ministry. Well, how many people? Are good? I don't know how many people got saved. How many people that before me that, that, that right in front of me got saved? None. Oh, it's a complete failure. I don't know. You realize how many gospel tracts my daughter gets out? Rarely, rarely do people say no when she tries to offer them gospel tracts. But there are people who say no. There are people who throw them away. 
When we do the Daytona 500, man, we get gospel tracks out. <coughs> I apologize. We get gospel tracks out by the tons. And then we look over at the garbage can, and there's a lot in the garbage can. When I go out, whatever ministry I'm going to do, I'm not expecting 100%. But I'm expecting something. Now, what I do, when I go to Walmart, we do our self-checkout. I'll take a graspable track, the next empty bag, I'll open it a little bit and slide that track in. So when they put their groceries in there, they get home, they're taking groceries out, they got a gospel track. Now, we've been caught by the devil. We have seen Walmart workers, after we've done that, walk over, go into that bag and grab that gospel track and throw it in the garbage. They're Satan. That seed, we don't know what that seed's going to do in the garbage. Maybe it went in their pocket. Maybe it's going to go to the manager. You don't know. You don't know where that, where the squirrel puts the seed. You don't know where that bird's going to poop. We got right now in our house, we got the rain gutters. And we got green plants growing out our, our gutters. How? Birds, wind, squirrels, ants, bugs, animals. And to realize, in the realm of witnessing, you could be an ant, you could be a bird, you could be a squirrel, you could be a fire. But if you are a sparrow, don't expect everyone to be a sparrow. If God has this man to be a squirrel, he goes out there, digs a hole and buries it, well then he's a squirrel. Don't let that squirrel be, all right, everybody has to be a squirrel when you need somebody out there with a fire. And if you're a fire, don't expect everyone to be a fire. And then we read earlier, Mark chapter 4, there are some 30, some 60, and some 100. Now that's not percentage. Because no public evangelism is a is 100%. And yet I've heard that verse mistranslated, misused at percent. There are some people who go out there 30, 60, and 100. We don't know the number. Listen, when we get the glory, then we'll find out. But there's only one thing. When we do go, Romans chapter 10, verse 15, How shall they preach except they be sent? It is written, how beautiful is the feet of them that preach the gospel of priests and bring glad tidings, good news of good things. He says, how shall we preach? What do we preach? Mark 16. Go in all the world and preach the gospel. It didn't say invite them to church. It didn't say come to movie night. Bring the, you know, come to our bowling night. We got bingo night. We got, you know, fellowship day. We got, you know, turkey dinners. We got, it says preach the gospel. And you're not, nobody's getting saved if it's not the gospel. Okay? But you didn't save them. We're going back to that tree. What does the tree have to say about its fruit? It says nothing. It produces that fruit. One year that tree could be filled with fruit. And years after, there could be a drought and that tree had no fruit. That tree could have a few fruit. That tree may produce fruit that rots. And yet that tree may produce fruit that, that falls to the ground. And gets in the dirt. It's picked up by a bird. It's picked up by a squirrel. It's burned by a fire. It is moved somewhere else. And becomes. 
a fruit, a tree, a light. And when that fruit falls off from the tree or that nut comes off that tree and, and is planted somewhere and becomes another tree, that tree did not do it. Matter of fact, that tree didn't water and that tree didn't plant it. A squirrel may have watered it and the rain of God. Or baby got into the hands of a human and they put it in a garden, they put it somewhere and they water it. And yet that tree is not expecting full fruit. And I know with apple trees from Connecticut that every year they got to go out in the, in the orchard and they got to cut off the bad branches. They got to trim the branches. And God our Father trims us. And that, you know, you can't have that in your life. That, that sin has got to go. That is a rot in this, that is not going to produce fruit this year. And, and God will get that saw and God will get the clippers and God will prune his trees if we allow him to prune the trees. So we can produce fruit and no, and I, I think if there's apple orchards where I come from in Connecticut and there are hundreds of trees. And we have gone to these apple orchards as a family, and we never heard an apple tree say, hey, look at my, my fruit. Well, that's nothing. You should see all the fruit in my tree. Oh, hey, guys, everybody's over here picking the apples off my tree. They don't talk. They don't brag. Baptists talk and Baptists brag. That's not natural. Now, I don't know what kind of tree you are, but Jesus said, Matthew 7, verse 20. Wherefore, by their fruits you should know them. In Connecticut, you go along the route, you get this big three kind of pronged leaf, you know it belongs to a maple tree. And when you walk up to a maple tree, you're not going to find fruit. The substance of the maple tree is in the tree itself. Our neighbor had a pear tree that they allow us to go and eat pears. Now, we were not allowed to grab a bunch of pears. Almost like the Bible. We could, we could sit under that pear tree and eat our filling. But we were not allowed to have, you know, take any pears home. And then we had up on the rocky cliffs, we had raspberries. Raspberries to our full. We didn't grow those raspberries. We didn't grow those pears. But they were there. And we got to enjoy them. One raspberry bush, we could have all we want to. We ate all the raspberries. And we could bring raspberries home. We did. But there was a pear tree where we could eat, but we couldn't bring home. Our other neighbor had grapes. You couldn't eat those grapes. They were sour. <coughs> they smelled good. But you couldn't eat them. And there are some vegetations out there and the fruit is dangerous, hazardous, poison. I didn't look it up. But there's a nut that they have to shell I think it, it's toxic to the hands. It, something, I forget what it is. <coughs> One of those nuts that we eat. But we can't touch the shell. They've got to shell it for us. There's all kinds of fruits. There's all kinds of nuts. And we can't expect everybody to be... I mean, what would the world be if we all, the only thing we had is oranges? What would be your grocery store... If you went to the produce section and it was just all oranges and nothing else. Now, I love tomatoes. I love cucumbers. I love to make a salad. I'm not going to have a salad with oranges. No, you need lettuce. You need cucumbers. You need tomatoes. You need onions. I was going to say croutons, but that doesn't come from a tree. And the variety of plants that God's given us. 
you can have a salad and you can enjoy it. You can enjoy grapes and you can enjoy cherries, bananas, potatoes. But not everybody's a potato. Not everybody is an apricot tree. That God is given a, a, a variety. And with that, we give him a certain, because there are, there are Christian trees, if you will, Christian plants. They are planted in a country they can't produce their fruit openly. They got to go underground. What's the underground church? Potatoes. Potatoes are grown underground. Beets are grown underground. So you see, that there's a fruit underground. That's the underground church. Carrots are underground. Our Christians, hey, we can't do it open. Now we have a little green sticking out of the ground, but our fruit's underground. And you can't go into a garden where there's all lettuce, I mean, they're all carrots and beets and potatoes. Say, well, there's no fruit here. You got to go underground. And there are countries where you have to go underground. Don't you say they don't have no fruit? It's underground. Now, let me show you one place here last. Genesis. Where man failed. Man failed. Genesis 1.27. So God created man in his own image. The image of God created he him. Male and female. There's no other sexes. Only male and female created them. God blessed them. And God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. And replenish the earth and subdue it. Okay? Let's stop right there. God said, be fruitful. God gave man work before he gave him Eve. God put man in the garden to dress the garden. Okay? Gave him work. Next thing God gave man was a help me, a woman. And he said to the man and the woman, the male and female, be fruitful and multiply. You realize man did not do what God told him to do? Do you realize that Adam and Eve did not have a child to after the fall? They had no children before, the, before Genesis 3. And yet she was in perfect health no curses, no sorrow, no pain, no sorrow. She could have had pregnancies with no pain and no troubles and no problem. And she was not pregnant at all. And the Bible does not tell us she was barren. Because when, when there was a woman that was barren, the Bible tells us Sarah was barren. Rachel was barren. Isn't it interesting? That even man, when God said, be fruitful... He didn't listen. And when they did fall, they disobeyed the word of God. They had two sons. One murdered the other one. And in Genesis chapter 5, we realized they had other children. Other males and females. And only males and females. A commission to a born again Christian is to go out there and Produce fruit. Be a squirrel. Be a bee. A bee goes and gets pollen off flowers and goes back to his hive and makes honey. We get honey by bees going out to flowers. Ants. If you ever watch ants, I have watched ants a lot. They're interesting animals to watch what they carry. I've seen them carry seeds. Well, that seed goes into their ant hole, and guess what? It's been planted. I've watched the squirrels, and we even fed. We go out and get nuts, and we give them to the squirrels, and they go out, they dig in the ground, they bury it. Well, squirrels are gardeners, <laughs> and they can't find most of their stuff, the stuff they, they planted and hid, and guess what? From a might from a acorn becomes a mighty oak. 
that had been, been planted by a squirrel who had no idea what he was doing. And the wind can bring forth. John chapter 3, about the new birth, the wind, the Holy Spirit. Fire. We are to we are to go out and plant seed. Inside the fruit is a seed. We don't grow the fruit. We water, we plant, God gives the increase. And from the time of Adam and Eve, when God said, be fruitful and multiply, already men and women disobeyed. And I realized, like we said, Mark chapter 4, Satan shows up. <coughs> I apologize. Not all the fruit we plant is going to be successful. There'll be fruit that gets saved and won't do anything. You'll be a dry, barren tree. That's not up to you. That's between them and God. There are seed that go Christians that go out there and they do produce fruit. And they are on fire. As soon as the famine comes, as soon as the drought comes, and then they dry up. And then there are Christians out there that go out there and they're just fruitful. But we're not all maples. We're not all sequoia trees. We're not all walnut trees. We're not all banana plants. We're not all tomatoes. We're not all potatoes and, and carrots. But we are trees that have fruit in itself of the Holy Spirit and of Jesus Christ. And we are to take our fruit and we're to plant it. And gospel tract is one of the greatest seeds that can be used anywhere. And there are many trees, Christians out there, trees, who do not let their fruit produce. It's sad. It would be wood, hay, or stubble at the judgment seat of Christ. Because Christ is expecting fruit. It is natural for a Christian to produce fruit. But we can't say we did it. We can't expect a Christian to be me. I don't expect everybody to go out and scream and holler on the street like I do. I don't expect everyone to do like my daughter to stand out there and to, and give out gospel tracts. Then again, I mean, I, I am very, believe it or not, I'm very reluctant with, with new people or people I don't know to start a conversation. I, I can't do that. Someone else can. See, there are things I can do that you do. And there are things you can't do or won't do that I do. Because I am a tree of God that God, hey, this is what kind of tree I want here. And you are a tree of God that God has for you. There's all kinds of trees. But when the, I, I know there's other fruit. I know that I have produced witnessing and evangelistic work. I know God has used me that there has been fruit planted from the seed to my tree. I know it. I know some of that fruit has produced a lot of fruit. I know one fruit right now, he produced, he got gospel tracks up. Give me that much credit. There are other fruits I have. I don't know how they're doing. I don't know if they're good or they're bad or that. That's not.
but let's say you have no fruit at all. Have you put your seed out? I mean, there might be areas where you are, you, you planted seed and it's dead. Noah only had eight people in the ark. Lot only ended up with three. Jesus could have only 12. And at the cross, he only had one disciple. Paul had a very few that traveled with him. It's, there's not great numbers of the Bible. You want great numbers, I'm telling you right now, you're in the wrong field. And when you say, when you say you saved them, if you saved them, they're dying going to hell. 